So The Black Phone is a film directed by Scott Derrickson. He directed films such as Doctor Strange, The Exorcism of Emily Rose and Sinister. Both of them are very similar to this film. The Exorcism of Emily Rose is a mixture of horror and drama combined together is kind of the same recipe he uses for this film. Sinister, made in 2012, also starring Ethan Hawke, who plays the villain in this film, is a creepy-ass film. I don't think there's a film that hasn't reminded me or made me feel like that since Sinister. And Sinister, which was released in 2012, is a horror film with supernatural elements, starring Ethan Hawke, who's also a villain in this film. And since watching it back in 2012, I haven't had another horror film that made me feel as creeped out and freaked as much as Sinister. So when I saw Scott Derrickson was coming back for the Black Phone, I thought, fuck yeah, why not? Let's go go ahead and watch it. I'm sure he'll bring out something from the top of his hat. You know, top hat, like a, like pulling a rubber out. I don't know. But yeah, Scott Derrickson, I thought it would be a great choice to, uh, to choose to direct this film and I could not wait to see it. Even though in the beginning I said this film was a horror film, it technically is more of a thriller and a suspenseful horror as opposed to the cheap jump scares horror. Now, this film is well crafted from the first 45 minutes to an hour. The reason why is because the first act is literally character development. You have the character called the Grabber, played by Ethan Hawke, who is basically a sadistic pedophile who preys on young kids, kidnaps them, throws them in his van, and essentially does stuff to them and kills them. Finney is a troubled child who gets bullied in school but also has um, issues at home with his uh, drunken dad who abuses him and his sister and it's quite cool because one thing I really enjoyed is how Scott Derrickson brings in their normal day lives and the issues they have and brings it into the supernatural element of this film. Now it may sound a bit crazy how I'm trying to explain it but trust me it makes sense. The cool thing, the cool thing about this film is that Mason Thames uh, and his female co-star, I forgot his name, what, what's her name? I'm sure I'll figure it out, but I'll probably put it down there well, as I'm shooting this video. They basically both gave great performances, especially in the more brutal scenes in which you see domestic violence at home with the, with the father and they pull off really well. They actually quite, they shine quite well. And I really, really enjoy, enjoyed it. Not that I enjoy kids getting beaten, by the parent. The tension in this movie is really well done. There are scenes in which I actually felt nailed to my seat and in that sense I mean watching Ethan Hawke trying to entice uh, Finney into allowing him to go up the stairs. So just think about this, you have um, a staircase going up the stairs staircase going up the stairs a staircase leading up to the upper uh, upper floor of the house in which the cellar is connected to and the uh, the kidnapper essentially leaves it open on purpose to entice the uh, entice Finney to go up the stairs so he can absolutely rip him apart when I say rip him apart there is a scene in there which is quite grot not even grotesque it's just uncomfortable you see a lovely pan shot from Finney going up the stairs and as we turn towards the corner you see Ethan Hawke on a chair with a belt in his hand, topless, waiting and waiting, hoping that the main lead comes out so he can beat him and beat him and beat him, as said by one of the characters on the mobile phone who tells Finney to not do that because essentially that's what he had to go through. Now, creative, creative styles that Scott Derrickson has. It's quite, it's quite brilliant. I'll give you an example. So when um, Finney is talking on the phone to the spirits who have been killed by uh, the grabber, the way they speak is quite unique. When Finney's on, on the phone talking to the spirits, he can actually hear them, but he cannot see them, whereas we, the audience, can see them. And the way it's done, it's, it's so well. I wish I could explain it properly. But as we are hear them talk, uh, talking on the phone, we could see them actually talking to Finney as if they are in person talking to him while on the phone. Gosh, this is so hard to explain, but it's really well done. If you watch the film, you'd understand what I mean. So yeah, in my opinion, the film is really, is really well done. I think Ethan Hawke is a great performance, even though even Ethan Hawke, you hardly see his face because he wears this freaking weird mask. And looking at him in that mask, it's just, it's just, it's just fucking weird. It just blows your mind because that mask has different 
pieces uh, for the bottom part of the face which emotes his emotion. One's a happy smiling face, another face is him looking sad, another face is him looking angry and like, it's, it's just creepy as fuck. Imagine seeing a man topless inside the inside a room that you're locked in and he is literally trying his best to you know seduce you so he can basically screw you and then kill you. What the f- But I think Scott Derrickson does really well in trying to emote certain motions from the audiences, especially with um, great character performances by most of the characters inside the film. Uh, Ethan Hawke is creepy as fuck. I wouldn't have imagined him being a evil, sadistic, pedophile murderer, but he pulls off the role really well, so I really appreciate that. And it's not as straightforward as the film sounds, but it's got a great element of mystery, uh, thriller, hardly any jump scares. Only th scenes that can actually scare me are a couple of scenes that I saw in the trailer. But other than that, the whole film is set on suspense and that's what made me appreciate it seeing a good horror i do not want to see cheap jump scares a few things they could have uh, fixed up on there's a few characters where there's one character in particular who is just there for the sake of it and he i guess tries to drive the plot point uh, a bit more but i won't ruin it for you in in that sense but he you wouldn't miss him if he if he wasn't there essentially let's just put it like that but other than that i think it's a really well made film i really enjoyed it it had all the elements of a thriller film that i would want to watch even though i would wouldn't consider it as a horror only because it doesn't have that jump scare jump scare element but i also appreciate the fact that it doesn't have it doesn't have that jump scare element because it's really saturated now in most horror films um so yeah scott derrickson well done to you brilliant film I, I i recommend it it could a few elements could be uh, could be improved of course that all films can be improved uh, that's just the way it is uh, but yeah if you want to watch a um, a good horror film so a good thriller horror film or good suspenseful horror film in the cinemas i highly recommend the black phone